You can usually tell just how contentious a town board agenda is by how many seats are taken in the meeting room. And at last night's town board meeting, it was standing room only. That's because incorporation was on the agenda, not once, but twice. The very word incorporation is enough to spark heated debates in our valley. However, one of the underlying issues fueling the fires of discontent was that many of the public commenters said that they didn't trust the town board. Stay there. I wouldn't believe you people. I wouldn't believe Jesus Christ Almighty who's up there and this stuff. That's just the way I feel about it. And accusations flew like the birds migrating south for the winter. Charity Sameda, uh, my question is this has been voted on so many times. What do you have to gain from this uh, Vicki Parker? Yeah. That, you, that you keep on bringing this up? I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, it's like whipping a dead horse. Thank you. It's been voted on how many times, but you keep trying to bring it back up. And uh, obviously, you must have something to gain out of it. The first issue of incorporation addressed was one that called for the creating of a resolution to establish a town board policy in favor of the public's right to vote for or against any effort to incorporate the unincorporated town of Pahrump. The town attorney, Brent Meach of Armstrong and Teasdale, explained that the resolution just sets policy for the town. An ordinance, however, makes a law, which is a problem because the federal law states that a town ordinance cannot supersede a state law. And there's already a law governing incorporation, which allows for the people's vote on incorporation. Public comment went on for about an hour on this issue, and no one spoke in favor of this item. However, former town manager Dave Richards suggested that it become an ordinance. Attorney Brett Meach explained that it would still be an ordinance with no force of law. With a few grammar changes, the ordinance passed to a vote of 3-1. Mike Darby was the descending vote. Originally, he had wished to abstain, but he was told unless he had a good reason, like a conflict of interest, he could not. The next item on incorporation the board addressed was an ordinance to repeal the Prompt Town Ordinance 46. The town attorney, Brent Meach, called the ordinance unconstitutional because it prohibits citizens from expressing their First Amendment rights. PTO 46 reads, it shall be unlawful for any person, group of persons, entity, or corporation to file a petition for incorporation which includes the area of an unincorporated town of Pahrump that does not include the entire area of the town. Meach went on to say that PTO 46 violates state law because it attempted to supersede state laws already in place. At one point, the crowd got rowdy, exchanging schoolyard insults with some of the board members, prompting Vicki Parker to say, oh, you're He's This is a Nye County Republican Central Committee Chairman Bill Carn said during public comment that the board's role as a legislative body was not to decide whether or not the laws were unconstitutional because that was a role for a judicial body such as the judges to decide. Carnes had threatened to arrest the town board if they passed this item and when they did pass it 3-1 with Mike Darby being the descending vote after his wife pleaded with him to walk out and not vote on the item. And Tom Water, I am placing you under citizen's arrest. Yes. For violating the battle provisions of the battle provisions statute. Yes. Arrest him. Therefore, a violation of your oath of office, which is a class D felony. I am pressing these charges on the three of you. We have probable cause and we have elements to a crime. I am a former Nevada peace officer. I am placing you under arrest. Yes! I am filing these charges. And I believe we have deputies from the Nine County Sheriff's Office here. Will you execute this citizen's arrest based on these complaints? Yeah, we need we need those witness statements filled out. So we're going to start to need people to go outside and write them. Yeah. Yes. You guys want to follow me? Have you write outside the premises until your process is done? The minute you put them under arrest, we'll sign them. They're under arrest. Later, we talked to Mr. Carnes on why he believed the town board violated the law. PTO 46 has a provision in it. Uh, when it was enacted in 2005, 
that states specifically in one sentence that the Pahrump Town Board gives up its right to repeal Pahrump Town Ordinance 46. It then goes on to give provisions on how it is to be repealed. If it's to be repealed, it has to go to a vote of the people of the town of Pahrump. And that's in very plain English. The judge of competent jurisdiction never told them that they could do that. They've never taken it before a judge, um, which is the only way you can legally do it. Or you go by the provisions of PTO 46, you put it in front of the people. So they violated the law. By violating that law and knowing that they violated the law, they've known for days with all the emails and everything, you cannot do this. This is the way that, the, that you have to go about doing this. They decided not to pay attention to that. They decided to take the information they received from their attorney and violate the law. So in vi knowingly violating the law, they violate their oath of office. In the oath of office, it says that violation of the oath of office carries a penalty of perjury. Perjury in the state of Nevada is a class D felony, punishable by one to four years in prison and or, a f I'm sorry, not or, and a fine potentially up to $5,000. Carnes went on to offer an explanation as to why he believed this item was brought forth. The chairman of the town board, Vicki Parker, and her husband were actually involved in a group actively trying to find a way to incorporate Pahrump um, against the will of the people, uh, which is why PTO 46 was written, was in reaction to that. Well, Vicki Parker's now the chair of uh, the Pahrump town board and has been for just the last few months. And uh, so it's not surprising that she's going after this provision. And it's all cloaked. It's cloaked under the ideas, well, we're looking at all the Pahrump Town ordinances. I think there's 45 or so. We're looking at all of them. We want to make sure everything's in line, change some things if we can. However, the only one that's been brought up is PTO 46. And the person that brought it up wasn't the attorney, wasn't the staff. It was the chair. We did email the town office to ask if anyone would like to comment, and we got no response. Other members of the Nye County Republican Party just enchanted with the fact that the police didn't arrest the town board members, told police this. Hereby now, letting you know officially, on camera, that you three officers are under arrest, under a citizen's arrest by the citizens of Pahrump and Nye County. Okay, you're not threatening my officers, right? I'm not threatening nobody. Okay. I'm just letting them know that they violated the law right. also. Well, yeah, just like uh, it was explained, I'm gonna get out of here. their attorneys advised them, our attorneys advised us, and we did what our attorneys said. Okay. All right. All right. After last night's town board meeting, the Nye County Republican Party wasn't the only ones filing police reports. Positive Pahrump, Facebook administrator Stephanie Lopez also filed one, but because she claimed as she was walking into the meeting, a woman was taking pictures of her. She blocked her face so she couldn't take the pictures, and she said that the woman then physically grabbed her arm and pushed it away from her face so she could continue to take pictures. We'll have more on the story as it develops, so stay tuned to News 30. Jenny Manning reporting.